Good evening, everyone. I'm Sasha Suda. I'm director and CEO of the National Gallery of Canada. Thank you for joining us for the celebration of the installation of Geneviève Cadieux's Barcelona. This event will take place in French. English simultaneous interpretation is available via the globe button at the bottom of your Zoom screen. Give you just a second to look for that. Before I begin, I would like to take a moment to acknowledge that the National Gallery of Canada is located on the ancestral and unceded territory of the Algonquin Anishinaabe people. They are the custodians of this land and have protected it from time immemorial in the present and for years to come. We are honoured to have with us this evening Elder Annie Smith St. George from the Algonquin First Nation of Kitiganzibi, who will now officially open this evening. This evening, the Elder's camera, Annie St. George St. George, her camera doesn't work, but she is with us. So welcome, Annie. Miigwech. Annie Smith St. George, Kishkwanek Potnetikas, Kitganzibi Anjipa. Kwikai Kukina, Minunakshik. Miigwech, Nigamach Domin, Bijashik Kukina, Awea Kwasunchima. Yash Algokan Anishnabi Aki. Ya no ego, ya. Welcome. Welcome, I'm Annie Smith St. George. I'm from Kirigan Zibi. Welcome to the great territory of the Algonquin people, the territory of our people, and also the territory where my ancestors uh, were here. Here in Ottawa, we're close to the Great River and all of the great Algonquin territory. And this is the territory on which the National Gallery of Canada is located. It's a pleasure for me to open this evening with us together and to be able to communicate together and to be able to share our experiences and to share our art together. This evening, we always start some type when there's a celebration, whether it's a powwow or dancing, it really depends, but when we get together and we bring together our ancestors with us today, we always start by thanking what we have. Uh, we shouldn't forget what we have today, and that's more important than any goods on this earth. So we would like to thank everyone. Miigwech. I would like to thank the Creator for this evening, for the fact that we're together, and also for the rain that we have today here in Ottawa. I would like to thank the Creator for the rain. Without water, we would not be able to live. So today, it's raining, and I would like to thank the Creator for the air that we breathe, the air that we breathe every day, and that the wind is coming up right now. We can see the wind, and we can see the leaves on the trees uh, that cleanse the air, the air that we breathe, uh, and also for fire, fire that we can light, but also for the sun that keeps us warm. I would like to thank the Creator for everything that, that's given to us and the medicine that we're using currently. 
and also for all of the food and all of the vegetation right up into the sky and the earth and the water. I would like to thank the Creator for everything that we have here on Earth. Miigwech, I would like to thank the Creator for everything that is given to us. Right up to the small particles in the water so that we were able to have good food. And I'd like to thank the Creator for us here today gathered. We are chosen, each of us here today. We're able to share what we have. Tonight we can talk about and share the beauty of art and the beauty of being able to communicate, to see beautiful things, but also the imagination and people who will talk about different stories and tell us about different ways that we have to communicate. I would like to thank the Creator, everything that is given to us as human beings. Thank you, Mikwitsch. I wish you a very good evening, everyone, and have fun. Now is the time for us to gather in love and in peace and in harmony. Mikwitsch. Thank you. Annie, thank you. Miigwech. Miigwech. Miigwech as well from Annie. Geneviève Cadieu is one of the most important Canadian artists today. <laughs> You're a badass, Geneviève. It's been so great getting to know you through this process. Kadir's work is the first work to be presented in the series called Leading with Women. This series will present three major works over the next three years. We are proud to highlight the important contribution of women artists in Canada. Barcelona hangs on the exterior facade of the gallery. It's well surrounded by Corlina Han Oberlander's Tega garden and Louise Bourgeois sculpture, Maman. We thank Scotia Bank for its support through the Scotia Bank Photography Program at the National Gallery of Canada. We want to thank Scotia Bank for their support of the gallery, and in particular, for their sponsorship of the Scotiabank Photography Program at the National Gallery of Canada. Tonight, José Drouin Brisbois, my colleague and the senior curator responsible for this project, will speak with Geneviève about this major project. Before we leave tonight, we will answer your questions. We invite you to send them to us in English or in French by using the question and answer function that you can see at the bottom of your Zoom screen. I now invite José Drouin Brisebois to say a few words. Thank you, José. Thank you, Sasha. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you as well, Annie, for these wonderful words uh, that you shared with us tonight. Uh, and also, I would like to speak to Sasha to thank as well Scotia Bank. Uh, it's a huge pleasure for me to present to you the artist Geneviève Cadieu uh, with the huge installation by this artist uh, that is based on the human body and on the face. Uh, it's basically a meeting place between the physical and spiritual areas. Uh, the artist uh, presents her work uh, and it's inspired by the theater and the cinema and also through advertising strategies and the effect of these strategies on people. She's also interested on the integration of uh, works of art in an urban area, on its visibility, on the e effects on citizens uh, and on the way as well that it will mark people. 
Kadju's uh, work has been presented in a number of numerous exhibitions, uh, including the Biennale of Montreal uh, in Sydney, at Sao Paulo, and in Venice. Uh, she was the first Canadian artist to represent Canada in a solo exhibition in the pavilion there. Her work has also been part of individual exhibits, uh, including the Geneva Art, uh, Contemporary Art uh, in London at the Tate Gallery in, in um, London. She, she also participated in the 15th, 59th Minute Video Art in Times Square, and her work can be found in numerous public and private collections in Quebec, Canada, the United States. Uh, and in Europe, as well as in Asia. Geneviève Cadieux is an associate professor of photography in the Faculty of Arts at Concordia University in Montreal. Uh, she received the Governor General's Award uh, in Visual and Media Arts uh, in 2011. She was named a Fellow of the Royal Society of Canada and was granted the Paul Emile Bourdieu uh, Award or Prize, at Quebec's most prestigious art uh, in 2018. It was my pleasure to speak to Geneviève Cadieu when we were installing her work. So, what you're going to see is a pre recorded conversation between Geneviève and I. This lasts about 20 minutes, and then we will be able to answer your questions. Uh, so, as Sasha had uh, indicated, please, uh, you can already put your questions. Uh, in the Q&A section, uh, and I will be looking at the questions following the presentation of this video. So I'll see you real soon. Hello, my name is José Drouin-Bras, Senior Curator, Curator at the National Gallery of Canada. I would like to begin by paying tribute to the Algonquin people, the traditional custodians of this land. We recognize there's longstanding and sacred connection to this land that remains unceded. We also pay tribute to all the Indigenous peoples who call Ottawa home, whether they are in the region or elsewhere in Canada. Today, I'm speaking with Geneviève Cadieu, an internationally renowned Canadian artist who lives and works in Montreal. She's here with me in Ottawa for the installation of her beautiful work, Barcelona. In May 2020, the National Gallery of Canada invited the artist uh, artists rather to design the first of three works that will make up the Leading with S Women series, an initiative through which we will see a series of women's artist work on the building's exterior facade over the next years. Hello, Geneviève. Hello, Jose. Before we talk about Barcelona, I'd like you to talk a little bit about yourself. You spent time as a teenager and as a young adult in Ottawa. Yes, uh, I also studied at the University of Ottawa, as well as my sister, Anne-Marie, who is uh, represented in the work Barcelona. And curiously, we were in the same building, and my father had also studied there. It was the Bourget building. So there's a kind of family link uh, to this event. And coming back to Ottawa really reminds me of very intimate memories in a certain way. I was very happy to be invited here. And uh, I studied fine arts at the University of Ottawa. And of course, there wasn't much at that time except for a parallel gallery. But there was the National Gallery. That's what it was called at that time. And it was located in a building on Sussex, much further south, I think. And as a student, it was extraordinary. It became a second home in a certain way. But uh, it uh, shaped my history, my relationship to art as well. Uh, and my father had an art house cinema, which also informed uh, or actually informs my practice. Yes, uh, can you tell us about the importance of cinema and theater in your work? Yes, well, obviously, because my father, who was a public service worker, also had an art house cinema in Ottawa called My Town Cinema. The programming was interested because there were two films a day, films that were European and American, but there were also very important films uh, that shaped my view of art as well as uh, art history. 
What inspires you when you create a work? Well, my inspiration comes from from cinema. It can also be something that I read, an idea that I'm following up on. I let myself be guided by the work in the end. So it also always starts with an idea, but the idea can emerge from a reading, a conversation, from the art that I can see. So in the end, it's a bit of everything. Can you tell us a bit about the inspiration of Barcelona? Barcelona was a formal idea that I had. I had this idea to work on the theme of community of lovers that, that appears in my work, but also with several cameras. So I tried to reproduce another type of space than a photographic space. Uh, it remains photographic, but when the images were taken, given that there were three cameras, it records the people in a movement and a space that's conceptual and that allowed me to create a sequence from the images that were recorded by the three cameras and uh, in the studio when I was looking at all of the material that I had this idea came to me to combine two types of images because I was interested in recording recording the passage of time but also, I'm interested in nature as a subject, uh, in landscape as a subject, because landscape is an important subject in the history of art, but also important in my practice. While I was working on Barcelona, there were fires uh, north of uh, James Bay. It, that created a very strange light, and I immediately went out in the street. I walked around and I photographed the various suns uh, as I moved around in the city, well, in my neighborhood. And spontaneously, I took a lot of images. And what was it, interest to me here was the light. So working simultaneously on two different fronts, I had this idea to pair these two motifs. Uh, so it was a recording of time between between the man and the woman and their movements in space and the movement of the different suns in the sky. And curiously, when I was rereading my notes and preparing for this conversation, uh, well, this fire, which was very big, destroyed about uh, 60,000 hectares of taiga and the work, Barcelona, is now found in this extraordinary garden that was created by Cornelia Hein, Han Oberlander, the Taiga Garden. Yes, exactly. Unfortunately, she passed away very, very recently. I would have liked her to have seen the work, but at the same time, she is present because we are here in front in this garden and we can appreciate the garden. Well, that was really determined by chance, but it's really interesting. Yes, exactly. It's really a poetic coincidence, uh, especially after this length of time. But also when the gallery invited me to create this work, to uh, propose a work for the facade of the gallery, it also touched me because of my family history, but also because of my artistic history. So obviously this is the most important gallery in Canada. So all of this symbolically was very, very important to me. I really liked what you said about the conceptual space, uh, the white, because for me, the background in the photos is strange. Uh, it's a strange space. It's a bit like being between two realities. Yes, this space, which is also for me a conceptual, a conceptual space, allowed me to be very free in the creation of the work. Uh, so we were working with images that were taken with three cameras. And therefore, it also becomes a link between all of the images. Uh, there's a feeling that we are in the same moment at the same time. And it's a, a moment where there is obviously an encounter or non-encounter or lack of communication. Yes, in fact, uh, in a certain way, it's unresolved. Uh, and that 
too allows the audience to become part of the work, to understand the work in relation to its history. Exactly. So it's precisely the idea that there are no reference points, uh, which provides an opportunity to create a stronger link with the subjects. Yes, an intimate con uh, connection. I never thought that uh, Barcelona would become a public work of art. Uh, it's really in speaking with you and when we looked at this space on the facade, it didn't take long for Barcelona to impose itself as a work. It works very well on this facade. The facade is very rhythmic, rhythmic and sequential due to the, the repeated motifs. And it's a, a work where there is a rhythm, a sequence. So there is no contrast. When you look at the work, there is an almost perfect integration of the work with the facade of the building. But that's also what's interesting. This work, which represents an intimate moment or a cinematographic moment in a certain way, that, that it becomes public. So this is something that's revealed something that's of an intimate nature, but in a public realm. And also the work belongs to the passers-by, to the spectators. Uh, contrary to a work uh, that's in a museum or a gallery, of course, they're public as well. But this work exists independently of all that. Uh, so it's also a very uh, free representation. So it's a possible encounter with visitors who don't really expect it in the end. No, exactly. It's surprising because as long as the building has existed, it's the first time that there's been a work displayed on the facade. So it was clear. We saw it during the installation that people were very interested in this event in a certain way. People took pictures. Uh, they were watching what was happening. So the work already has uh, has another life, in fact, beyond our control. For me, it's also important that it's happening at this time during the pandemic, that the fact that we're able to have uh, art outside of the gallery and that we can meet people who can't come inside for the time being, that's really important. Yes, exactly. It's a, it's a, a living gesture. It's a living gesture, gesture rather, that also expresses the life of the gallery, because it's a work that also becomes visible on its facade. But it's nevertheless a work that speaks to an, a non-encounter or an encounter, but um, understanding the work as well, that it's intimately linked to this moment in time. Uh, that's what touched me quite a bit when we first talked about the project, uh, when we looked at this image, uh, the issue of isolation, the suffering as well that we can see in the work subjects. Uh, I find that very touching. I think that it also becomes a way of understanding what we feel as humans right now. Yes, exactly. That's it. It's curious because that's what the power of art is, a, a work that was produced in 2003. But for me, this is a new work. That we're not really in the same artistic experience, for example, people who would have experienced this work in a room, but rather the work is expressed on the facade. But also, there's a new reading here, perhaps a reading that's linked to the suffering, the suffering of human beings uh, in this difficult time. We know that there are people who are suffering as well. And there's something that's expressed in this work, not a psychological distress, uh, but uh, a certain suffering. Uh, but a subdued suffering. Uh, there's no uh, outpouring or violence. But there is a psychological side of the work that interests me a lot. Uh, we feel that there's something else going on, uh, the inner life of the subjects uh, that we can see. And it's something that we don't normally see. 
we're often in a performance mode. Uh, so the vulnerability, the fragility is revealed here. And it touches me a lot uh, because I see myself in these, in these subjects here. Yes, I think that people can identify with them. But I also asked myself the question when I was producing the work. I said, it'll be interesting to see about young people because the protagonists are young. So I wondered about that as well because the work is public. I think that the space given to the work allows for a reading by the public in general. Now that the work is installed, what are your impressions of Barcelona on the gallery's facade? Well, it's very strange because there's an integration between the work and the building. We've been working on this project for a year, for, and all of a sudden, in one day, it becomes visible. It's also a happy moment. It's a happy moment for me as an artist, first of all to see that it works well. So that's my first observation, but it was also a bet when when we, when we work on a, a project, we imagine it for a year and then finally it becomes visible. So it's a, it's a moment for an artist and a, a curi curator that's, a, that's quite pleasing. It's a magical moment. Yes, but also with this weather and the beginning of the summer in front of this beautiful garden and everything. It was almost an ideal moment for the installation of the work. It could have been done in the winter as well, but it would have been a different installation experience. But the moment when the work is installed, when, when it is discovered, and now we can live with it. Well, I want to see, I want to come back actually to see it again, to observe it again, because it will be there for a while. But also the work has a kind of, well, the work actually becomes autonomous. It's going to have a new life. It's a new adventure. Yes, exactly. The work belongs to the public realm now. So that's also interesting, but obviously in producing the work because of the size of it, we had to turn to materials that are normally used uh, for advertising purposes because of the size of the images. So that was also a strategy. But I think that when people see the work on the facade, people don't think about that. No, it becomes something else. Yes, it does become something else. It's obviously photography, but there's also the whole question of how to make photography exist in a realm in the in the public space and urban. Yes, and urban. So the south side of the building is very urban. And at the same time, it's very landscaped. So we have ideal conditions that can make the work come alive. So this is a well-known building. It's an iconic building in Ottawa. So we know that we're not looking at an ad, but I don't know, an artist could also work in this way, but we're still in using advertising materials in the making of the work. It was also produced in labs that produce large ads. So that was complicated as well, not complicated, but complex in a certain way. They're not used to working with artists and someone said, oh, how interesting, no pixels. So here we weren't working in an art lab. We were really in a commercial laboratory with uh, commercial printers. And we explained that we wanted uh, very high resolution and all that. So that's a whole other kind of work. And that too is part of the work. It's interesting to watch people reacting uh, in the uh, installation of the work yesterday. They saw it was a work of art, not 
an ad banner. Exactly. The strategy is the same, but the content is totally different. And that also allows the viewer to easily enter into the work. I also really like how on the facade, and we've already talked about this, we have a kind of cinematographic aspect, and I've never seen the gallery in this way. So that also enhances elements of the architecture that I'd never noticed. So for me, it's something quite special when a work of art can do that. I've been in Ottawa for a long time, and I see the museum in a whole new way. Same for me, because it's uh, still a very austere building in a certain way. But you can see that at first glance, you think that it might be rather difficult to understand or uh, difficult to uh, come close to because the building is grandiose, cold, yes, cold, grandiose. But when you're in the gallery space, because this is part of the museum space, this garden, the building really welcomes people very well. I don't know how this was designed, the garden and all that. You have an intimate relationship with that building, something very special because it's a really masterful building in a way. Yes, there's a human element. The Exactly, the, hu the building welcomes the work. It's very special and we, can, we perceive it differently and there's no difficulty either. Yeah, there's a synergy, a surprising synergy that we discovered during the installation or when the work is installed. At the same time, it's a building that was designed in the national capital and this facade, which is an important facade of the building, allows several different points of view to look at the work. You can be very close up, you can see it in part, you can see it uh, as a whole, you can see it from a distance, and also you can see it at different moments in time. And yes, you discover it by moving around. So there's the movement of the characters in that space and also the movement of the viewer, which is important for this work. Thank you very much, Geneviève. Thank you, Josie. I'm really happy to have worked on this project, and so am I. Hello again. Now I will invite Geneviève to join me to answer your questions. Hello, Geneviève. Hi. It's very different from our in-person meeting in Ottawa. Yes, it's another context. And uh, for me, it's my first virtual vernissage. I'm not used to that, but I know that there are uh, people watching and I want to thank everyone for being there here uh, to celebrate this important moment and the fact that we can see this work of art because unfortunately the museum is still closed. So it's one of the works that, that we can experience at this point in time. And I really appreciate it during the last month, seeing so many people come and look at this work who were walking uh, back and forth uh, in front of the facade. And so it uh, becomes a work that really marks uh, the place. It's very efficient that way. Well, I'm very happy to see that uh, this work has been seen but also independent of the uh, galleries being open or closed. It's quite an opportunity for the artist because I've had uh, exhibitions that were closed for uh, reasons related to the pandemic. Uh, this has happened everywhere in the world so that it can be visible uh, at all times. That's a really a opportunity for me. So we have a few questions. I have one because we didn't broach this topic in our conversation. It's uh, related to the name of the piece, the Barcelone. Can you tell us a bit about what inspired you to call it that? Well, curiously, it was something that I dreamed of. I dreamt that I was in Barcelona, and when I 
wanted to name this piece. I didn't quite understand the meaning of that dream, but I was in front of a bar in Barcelona, and I was alone in Barcelona. In the word Barcelona, you hear seul, which is alone in French. Um, in English, there's Bars alone. Alone is there too, so the name of the piece is bilingual. And this title evokes elsewhere. And that's interesting because when there's a meeting between two beings, well, there too, one is in another place. So it was a title of that evoked uh, many things and was the appropriate title for this work. So I'm going to read this question in English and then I'll say it in French because several of the uh, questions were sent in English. Which movies have been most important to your work and or simply to your enjoyment? Well, there are many films had a very special situation in regard to films because of my family. I worked at the cinema and Jeanne d'Arc by Dreyer was something incredible. So all the major masterpieces that I was able to see have influenced me to a certain degree. I'm also thinking about the Chien Andalou and Godard, the uh, Nouvelle Vague films yeah, marked me quite deeply. For recent work, there was Bruno Dumont, who's a filmmaker who I was very interested in discovering. And in American cinema, there was another energy. So, as a francophone, one can understand the uh, allegiance one might have to France. There's that uh, European cultural side, but also there's all of uh, English Canada, and all of Canada has this reality of being uh, North American, but also francophone. So this uh, really allowed me to uh, find my place as an artist. And if I look at the form of my work, well, it's these large size. So that's related to uh, large screens in the movies. There's always a presence of a man or a woman. You could think about uh, narration. And then when I uh, install several works in a uh, personal exhibition, well, there's a man, a woman, there are fragments, there are landscapes. So the whole reading of the exhibition becomes a, an experience which, to my mind, is cinematographic. So also there's this relationship of uh, cinema and time. Yes, this work has the special uh, aspects of having uh, 11 components, 11 images, which uh, form it. For uh, the Ottawa version, there are nine of them. And since it's so closely related to the site, well, the site is a part of the work. There, it's the whole other version of the original work. It's really a new work that is installed. I'll read the next question that's also in English. So interesting to hear your perceptions on the building and the layer that you add to it to break down the monumentality. Can you comment on other installations on the exterior of buildings? The Musée d'Art Contemporain et Concordia, par exemple. To defy the uh, monumental aspect of the building. Talk about other buildings. I could uh, speak about Venice, maybe. Those who know the Canadian Pavilion in Venice, it's a complex architecture 
And one of the uh, strategies I'd imagined at that point was to close the pavilion and to have the viewer in the interior courtyard in front of a, a very, very large scare kiss between a man and a woman, which wasn't a cinematographic uh, kiss. It was very egalitarian in a way. And it was um, enclosed by, surrounded by two scars. So it was a moment that talked about the pleasure of an encounter and also the suffering of an encounter. And the viewer was uh, in front of very, very uh, enlarged pictures, which much detail. So then that can be associated with the landscape. Well, uh, and also there's there are the gardens next to it in Venice. And also see oneself reflected in the windows of the pavilion. That was also part of the work. And we can see that there is some uh, similarity between uh, that work and also the Milky Way, which is uh, the work on the uh, Montreal Museum of Contemporary Art, which uh, men and women uh, that uh, are against the sky, and we can see them uh, in the day and the night. And it's a direct reference to Man Ray, who was a uh, photographer. They were my mother's lips, but there was this acknowledgement of a family connection, so a kind of um, link between generations of women, and also to put this image on the institution, which is uh, by definition quite masculine, maybe it's less so now, but the building of the National Gallery is a very imposing architecture that's quite masculine, but you can see that there's also a very delicate aspect, especially on that facade, because there's the landscape that takes part in the reading. The building is very well um, framed by the landscape. And so uh, that reflects my surprise at the synergy. It's interesting to see because there are nine panels. We've never seen so many panels or so many banners. So you really get an idea of the building as a whole. You can perceive it more uh, as an element of landscape and the landscape aspect becomes even more important because of that. And so a uh, technical question. Thank you for the presentation. It's wonderful to see photography respected as art. Can you speak about the technical aspects, f-stop, shutter speed, and lighting against the white background? Well, in the case of this work, I was working with three cameras that we, uh, we call uh, chambers or four by fives that allows to get a very high definition negative and also a lot for uh, enlarging the image. I have to say that uh, for each one of my uh, works, I work, I work with a lot of different cameras, sometimes 35 millimeters, and also what we call mid-size format. And recently, I took uh, uh, images uh, starting with my iPhone. I'm actually more attached to the image that photography allows rather than attachment to the technical sides. But of course, it is a technique, a printing a technique, or printmaking technique. But that's not really what interests me. It's more how the camera 
captures reality or how it allows us to perceive reality differently. Especially, we talked about this earlier, in Barcelona, there is that blank or white space, that the conceptual space as well, but it's also a space of the spirit in a certain way. So there's a reading that is made that's closer to the reading of a text. You can uh, also read the work as a frieze, but do you see it from uh, left to right, or do you read it from right to left? Uh, do you read it as a whole banner? Or So that also uh, makes me think of uh, how to read a text. And so the reading changes as to how close you are, because uh, it reveals itself more and more as you get closer and closer to the museum. The reading can really vary during the approach. Yeah, contrary to the experience uh, in a cinema where the uh, viewer is seated, here the movement of the spectator in front of the work allows for a very specific vision or view of the work that is uh, related to the position of the viewer in the city. So we recognize that it's a photographic image, it's not a painted image, but can we see it that well? That's what I wondered. Yes, we can see it, we can understand it, but we're still at a distance, uh, even if we have the impression of being intimately in a conversation with it. It's still uh, what's happening in the mind, in the perception, and not in the body of the viewer, as in Venice, where you're very close to the work. We don't have that kind of relationship. So that too is interesting. That question of detachment is also interesting in this case. So there are a few other questions. Could you talk about your uh, approach to choosing the images and their placement, the logic of the sequence. That was done in a workshop. I conceived this in 2003, the original version. So I had to take about 150 photographs. And that's uh, part of the way I work. I re-photograph things, I uh, project uh, the contact sheets. Uh, I have several projectors in my workshop. I change the images. How, as I look at this work, as I try out various combinations, I finally reach some kind of resolution, which, uh, curiously, I tried to rework this facade or the sequence for the, the facade. So I didn't change it. All I did was I took out um, a panel so that the sequence might work. I tried it again and I thought, no, the sequence is already there. So you had already worked it out. Yes, I had spent uh, quite a few months uh, figuring out how to resolve this works, which is quite complex. So photography, uh, you can try six or something, but with 11 images, it, it eventually can find a, a, a sense. But when it was uh, exhibited the first time, there was no beginning or end. Now there's maybe an end because it's uh, more linear. And you're not uh, right in the middle of the work. But there are other qualities that emerge from this new version, this new artistic experience. So I'll uh, read several comments and maybe another question. One of the comments. The best camera is the one you carry. I have another comment. Thank you for mentioning the cinematographic view placed most appropriately on the gallery with its particular architecture and series of large vertical windows. Brilliant. So one last uh, question in English. 
en anglais que je vais ensuite traduire. Did you select the subjects or were they spontaneous? If you selected the subjects, how did you develop a rapport with them before photographing them? Donc, est-ce que tu as choisi les personnages? Euh, est-ce que c'était spontané? Si tu les as choisis, est-ce que, c'était, est-ce que tu as développé un rapport avec eux avant les, de les photographier? Well, yeah, it's an interesting question because the female subject is my sister, Anne-Marie Cadieu, actress, and uh, she appears uh, periodically in uh, all of my works. We've often worked together, and she always said yes when I had a particular request, when I had... uh, a position to ask for, because in the beginning there are ideas uh, that uh, we work at, we try and uh, record things to find the, uh, concretize the idea we have in the beginning, and then there's a kind of improvisation that happens. So this, and then there's a work in the studio, but that's done over several uh, stages. And I also know Hubert Marcelin quite well. He's the other character or the other subject in this work and so it wasn't at all spontaneous their clothing was chosen there were very precise instructions three cameras a large white space the uh, lighting and then the whole uh, kind of uh, process that was not spontaneous it wasn't just uh, <laughs> done all at once. So it's a very um, instructed. So I'll uh, let you uh, give a final word if you want to thank anyone. Well, I want to say I'm really uh, happy and honored to have been invited by the gallery and also for this uh, ambitious project that uh, Sasha Suda uh, had imagined, uh, the uh, museum director, and also I would like to uh, thank the other people who uh, worked at the development of this, uh, Kitty Scott, uh, Isabel Corriveau, and David Lloyd, and also uh, this uh, innovative uh, project called uh, Leading with Women, and José Thank you to you. I'm really delighted that we were able to work together and also that we were able to uh, share this uh, big adventure. And we also will be working together with uh, Serge Godet, who uh, was, uh, had decided to uh, be there with us, uh, even though he uh, got another position at the end of the uh, project. And also Saldam Tanore, who uh, uh, helped me during this whole uh, project. And I also want to thank the uh, figures uh, of my uh, sister, uh, the actress uh, Anne-Marie Cadieu and uh, Hubert Marcelet. And thank you to all of you to have uh, come here. It warms my heart to see you here. And uh, me too, I would want to thank the same people that you have thanked who made this uh, such an interesting adventure. And especially, I'm very honored to have been able to work with you, Geneviève. It was a great honor for me. And I'm very happy uh, about the result and the reception by people, by journalists. It's a major success. And my idea was also to uh, make the museum more human and it really worked. Thank you very much. I will uh, pass the the microphone to Annie for some final words. Yes, miigwech. Ms. Kedju for your presentation. It was lovely and it was a great pleasure for me to listen to you. Thank you to all people who came, for everyone who's here to support the arts.
ਨਿਕੀ ਕੁਝ ਹੋਇਆ ਮੈਨੂੰ ਇਹ ਨਾਮ ਕਹੇ ਨਹੀਂ ਨਿਕੀ ਨਸਤਤਮ ਨਿਕੀ ਵਪਨਾਨ ਕਰਕੇ ਨਾ ਕੁਝ ਨਿਕੀ ਨਾ ਉਦਮ ਕਹੇ ਕਿ ਨਾ ਅਮ ਆਈ ਥੈਂਕ ਯੂ ਆ ਵਾਸ ਵੈਰੀ ਆਨਰ ਟੂ ਬੀ ਯੂ ਹੀਅਰ ਦਿਸ ਈਵਨਿੰਗ ਟੂ ਓਪਨ ਅਪ ਦ ਸਮ ਹੈ ਪ੍ਰੀਜ਼ਰ ਲਾਈਕ ਸਿਸ ਸੋ ਐਕਸਕਿਊਜ਼ ਪਾਲਾ ਤੋ ਲੰਗ ਵਨ ਸਪੀਕਿੰਗ ਫਰੀ ਲੈਂਗੁਏਜਸ ਸੋਰੀ ਸੋ ਇਸ ਵੈਰੀ ਹੈਪੀ ਟੂ ਸਪੀਕ ਐਟ ਦ ਓਪਨਿੰਗ ਆਫ ਦਿਸ ਸੈਸ਼ਨ ਹੀਅਰ ਐਂਡ ਆ ਵਾਸ ਵੈਰੀ ਹੈਪੀ ਟੂ ਲਿਸਨ ਟੂ ਦ ਡਿਸਕਸ਼ਨ ਐਂਡ ਦ ਕੁਐਸਚਨਸ ਥੈਂਕ ਯੂ and i wish you happiness and success thank you and take care of yourselves and take care of everyone take care of my joshin cooking out means goodbye we'll see each other again thank you very much ani thank you and thank you to all those who came to listen on this rainy evening in Ottawa and uh, we're looking forward to seeing you in person and please come and uh, visit and see this wonderful uh, work of Barcelona by 